Have you seen uh, these symbols in class, dashes and wedges? A dash indicates going into the board, and a wedge indicates coming out of the board. So we could draw, this could indicate the orientations of three sp2 orbitals. And then the p orbital could be like this, to be perpendicular to all of these. Do you see how this is trigonal planar? Um, this is actually a flat plane that's coming into and out of the board. One corner pointing towards you, one corner pointing away from you, and one corner like this. You could also draw it like this, but that would make it harder to draw the p orbital, because now the p orbital would be coming into and out of the board. Okay. Uh, while we're at it, we should say, what is the shape of sp3 orbitals? What do sp3 orbitals look like? Um, kind of like pyramids, sort of? So... Like triangles, but... Here's the shape of a p orbital. S, yeah. Here's the shape of sp3. So it's another figure eight, but where one lobe is what much bigger than the other. In fact, a lot of the time, it's more convenient to leave out this little tail, though, because it kind of makes the picture confusing. Uh, but this is the general shape of sp3. In fact, this is the shape of sp3, sp2, and sp orbitals. They all kind of look like a figure eight where one lobe is smaller than the other one. I always have a hard time remembering, though, uh, which of these has the, the smallest tail? Huh. For some reason, I think it's sp3. Although that has the most p character, so it seems like it should be the most symmetrical. So I'm having a hard time remembering whether the sp3 should have the smallest little lobe or the sp. But in any case, the general form is the same for sp3, sp2, and sp. They all have one big lobe and one small lobe. And a lot of the time, to make your picture simpler, you would just draw a big lobe and leave out the small lobe. OK. What would be the, um, the hybrid? So, what would be the angle between the p orbital and the sp2 orbitals here? 90 degrees, because it would be perpendicular. And the sp2 orbitals would all be 120 from each other. Can you see why they would be 120? Because if you're splitting up 360 degrees into three equal portions, well, 360 divided by 3 is 120. Well, what would be the orbital geometry here? Um. Just between the two sp orbitals. How can the two sp orbitals get far apart from each other? Is that just linear? Yeah. Like this. I'm not going to bother drawing the, the small lobes, because that would interfere. But if you draw the big lobes, they would be linear from each other. And then where would the p orbitals be? Well, they would be perpendicular. So I could draw one p orbital like this. By the way, notice that even though this has two lobes, it's only one orbital. It's one p orbital with two lobes. And where would the second p orbital be? Well, that would be hard to draw, but that would be perpendicular to the page, coming into the page and out of the page. And perpendicular to these. So what's the angle between these two sp orbitals? 180. Yeah, linear, 180. And the angle between the p orbitals and anything else would be 90 degrees. What's the name of this molecule? Methane. Yeah, it's got one carbon, so it's methane. So let's work out the geometry here. What's the hybridization of this carbon? Sp3. Good. So what shape should it take? Tetrahedral. That's right. Now, how would we draw that? Well, we can draw that like this. And I think the best way to draw the rest of the tetrahedron. Can you see how this is a tetrahedron? So the base, there's a triangular base. Triangular base. Um, two, one corner is pointing towards you. One corner is pointing away from you. Here's the third corner of the base. And here's the top of that uh, tetrahedron. What would be the bond angle here? One and nine degrees. If you're actually going to draw the orbitals, here you draw an sp3 orbital. If you wanted to, you could draw a little back lobe over here, but I'll leave that out. 
use another SP3 orbital. There's a back load you can draw over here. And these are hard to draw because they're going into and out of the board, but you can draw SP3 orbitals over here as well. Do you know what the name of this molecule is? Mm, I'm not sure what it's called. That's ammonia. That's a pretty common molecule. Now, what's going to be the hybridization of ammonia? SP3. Because it's got a lone pair. So using our rule for hybridization, it will be SP3. So what geometry will the orbitals take? Hydrogen. Now, how can we draw that? I'll draw hydrogen here. Hydrogen here, hydrogen here, but that's all the attached atoms. So what goes up here? The lone pair. What type of orbital will that be in? S or no P? Actually, I don't know. What's the hybridization here? Sp three. Right, and um, this only has sp three orbitals. Okay, so it has. To so it's got to be sp three. Remember that anything that's sp three hybridized doesn't have any unhybridized orbitals left over. So. This would be sp3. What type of orbital is the nitrogen using over here? sp3. Right. And these two would also be sp3. Now, what's the name of the molecular geometry here? Now, that's kind of a trick question because the molecular geometry depends only on the positions of the atoms, not the lone pairs. Just by definition, molecular geometry depends only on the positions of the atoms. I think a lot of people would be tempted to say the geometry here is tetrahedral because it looks a lot like methane. but they can't have the same name for their geometry because they're not even attached to the same number of atoms. This is attached to three atoms, and this is attached to four. Well, we don't want to give, we don't want to give the same name to atoms that are attached to different numbers of atoms if the molecular geometry only depends on the number of atoms. So they had to invent a new name for this. Do you have to remember what the name is for this geometry? Um, is it trigonal pyramidal? No. I, I should know, but I don't remember what it is. You were guessing <laughs> trigonal pyramidal. Well, let's check. Do these atoms make up a trigonal pyramid? Remember, don't focus on the lone pair, just focus on the atoms. Is it a trigonal pyramid? Yeah. Yeah. So can you see that we have a pyramid here? The three hydrogens are at the base, and the nitrogen is at the top. Why is it called trigonal pyramidal? Because the base is a triangle. Um, some triangles have like square bases, like the Egyptian pyramids have square bases. But this is a pyramid with a trigonal base, just the three hydrogens. So you were right. This is. Trigonal pyramidal. That, and that name actually makes good sense if you just look at the atoms and you ignore where the lone pair is. Okay. Um, don't confuse that with trigonal planar. Can you see the difference? In trigonal pyramidal, we have uh, basically four atoms in three dimensional space, whereas trigonal planar. Um, well, again, I guess you would have uh, four atoms, but they'd all be in a flat plane. So those are two different things. People tend to get those confused. We so want to be careful about that. Now, how about the bond angle? Now, the bond angle, again, only depends on the angle between atoms, not the angle of the lone pair, just by definition. So the bond angle would be, say, the angle from a hydrogen to a nitrogen and back out to a hydrogen. It would not be the angle from a hydrogen to the nitrogen and up to the lone pair, just by definition. Now, remember, do electrons want to get close to each other or far apart from each other? far apart, that are unsociable. And it turns out that lone pairs are especially unsociable. We'll just memorize, everyone wants to get particularly far away from lone pairs. So normally we would expect these to have 109.5 angles. Well, because of this lone pair, are these the bonds now going to be closer to each other or further from each other than you would expect? Closer. Yeah, so they should be less than 109.5. They would be at 107. I don't know if you have to memorize that number, but you should know this is a little less than 109. So this would be 107 bonding.
So just like molecular geometry only depends on where the atoms are, not the lone pairs, bond angle depends on the angles that involve the atoms, not the lone pairs. Now, notice that I think the best way to do these molecular geometry problems is start by finding the hybridization. That will tell you the orbital geometry. Now you can see that the orbital geometry is different than the molecular geometry. The orbital geometry tells you the actual geometry of the orbitals. Here the sp3 orbitals really are arranged in a tetrahedron. But on the test, they're not going to ask you for the orbital geometry, they're going to ask for the molecular geometry. Um, well, the molecular geometry here would be trigonal pyramidal. But you still need to know the orbital geometry to figure out what this looks like. So you can figure out the orbital geometry first, but it's the molecular geometry that they're likely to ask you.